Yeah, so I want to make a quick video about the importance of sunlight, which I have done before in the past, but here I am again trying to give a deeper interpretation of the sun. And so I also want to talk about the spiritual implications, so I'm going to get on that first, because everything starts with the spiritual anyway, believe it or not. The physical is just a a physical manifestation of the spiritual. The spiritual was always here. The physical came way after. And therefore the spiritual realm is eternal. And the physical realm, which we all live in on this three-dimensional plane we call Earth, it's just temporary. But uh okay, so in the book of Ecclesiastics chapter 11 verse 7 it says truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun the s-u-n not the s-o-n like most people think you know jesus and all this old stuff but no the sun that ball of energy up there that the government loves to spray and and and, and block why would the creator, who most people ignorantly call God or Jehovah, Allah, Buddha, Shiva, Yah, Yahweh, all these false names, but I call them Yahoo. Why would he say that the sun is sweet and pleasant to behold? Well, let's break that down a little bit. First of all, when he say behold, that don't mean literally look at the sun like a lot of these stupid, selfish, egotistical, arrogant, conscious community Negroes talk about. The creator said behold basically meaning to be outdoors in the sun, letting it hit your skin. I call it sun bathing. Not sun gazing while you're looking at the sun. Right now I'm somewhat looking at it, but not directly. It's, it's supposed to indirectly go through your eyes. You know, through your optic nerve or whatever. It's going to stimulate all that. But ultimately it's going to... It's going to overwhelm in a good way. Your pineal gland. It's going to stimulate it. Activate it. And also decalcify it all at the same time so that you could have deeper spiritual intuition so that you could connect more with the spiritual realm but it's deeper than that though sweet is a word or term for satisfaction do it not feel good or does it not satisfy you to be out in the sun most people don't even understand it. Like, when it's a nice summer day, they don't even think about it. They'd be like, oh, it's sunny out. It's nice out. It's clear blue skies. I'm going to get out and enjoy this weather, this day. But they're looking at it from a foolish, you know, personal standpoint. Like, oh, I'm going to just go turn up and go, you know, roll around town and all of this stuff. And just look pretty and, you know, socialize and whatever. Do what I do. That's how a lot of people think on these sunny days. They don't think in terms of getting out there and just sitting still and letting the sun hit your skin. You know, sunbathing. Beholding the sun. So that you could meditate. You could rest. You could re-energize your bioelectrical system. You could detoxify your blood. Provided, you know, you stay out there long enough to the point where the sun makes you sweat. You're going to detoxify toxins out of your blood, out of your urine. You're going to uh, stimulate your lymphatic system. Which is going to get further t more toxins out of your body through your kidney and your urinary tract and your your 
your anus and all of that. Believe it or not, when you're out in the sun, if you're out there long enough, especially if you're letting you're letting the sun rays hit as much skin as possible, you're going to feel your body, your stomach is going to start growling. Why is that? Because the sun literally stimulates good bacteria in your, in your gut or your colon. So if you're out there long enough, your, your stomach's going to start growling and it's going to basically get your digestive tract and system regulating and you're going you're gonna to want to go and poop. And that's a good thing. <laughs> and not only that, you're sweating out toxins, but you're also, you know, you're sweating out salt too. So if you're consuming uh, a lot of salt, that's a good way to get that out because too much salt is bad for your body. You know, the body do need sodium chloride, but only in minuscule amounts because your body holds salt and too much salt in your body will um, deplete your body of water and your body is over 70% water in your blood and your lymphatic system. Um, and your interstitial fluid, all of these things got salt in them that they hold, you know, your, your liver holds on to salt, but if you're out in the sun, like you're supposed to be anyway, then you're going to be, you know, losing salt. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because too much salt is bad for the body. And a lot of people experience inflammation, you know, digestive issues, uh, especially stiffen of the, stiffening of the arteries, high blood pressure because of stiffening of the arteries, coagulated blood. Well, actually, your blood don't get co coagulated with too much sodium. The, the too much sugar will thicken your blood, though. But that's another issue. But nonetheless, being out in the sun detoxifies all of this crap out of your body. It also... Uh, it, it, it helps regulate too much blood sugar that is in your body. So, a lot of people don't understand that... If you got too much sugar in your body, in your blood system, that's unregulated, then that's going to cause diabetic issues or pre-diabetic issues like neuropathy, nerve problems, diabetic neuropathy, you know, um, muscle cramps, skin ish issues like itching and um, sores and stuff like that. You take forever to heal if you get a new sore or something. So you want to make sure that you're getting enough sunlight to regulate blood sugar, to get out toxins out of your body through your skin pores and regulate your urinary tract so that you could, you could urine more efficiently because um, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, just like having too much what is called mucoid plaque in your colon, the same could happen with your urinary tract. But if you're detoxing through the sun, then you can regulate a lot of that stuff. And also, and also what the sun does is it, um, it makes it where you could produce the sleep hormone called melatonin so you could sleep. So if you're not getting at least 40 to 40 minutes to an hour of direct sunlight every day, then you are losing out. That's one great reason why you're not sleeping properly. Okay, I'm back. The mailman or the mail lady came, but yeah, folks, um, y'all should be out in the sun because every day they're spraying these chemtrails up there, these petrochemical based, genetically modified carcinogenic chemicals you know aluminum barium strontium mercury man all type of garbage and it's coming down on the crops and the earth and it's just ruining our food supply and all of that stuff things are growing slower they're having these mutated seeds and stuff and and that's really why there is no such thing as organic food anymore, I believe, because of these chemicals that they're spraying in the sky. 
but the creator said that it is good to behold the sun for the very good benefits that I mentioned earlier. You know, it makes you happy. You know, it 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 excites your senses, makes you more focused and aware of your surroundings. It recalibrates your nervous system, your bioelectrical system. It uh, detoxifies your blood, your urine. It gets your lymphatic system flowing, especially if you're exercising outdoors in direct sunlight, which I like to do whenever I can. I'm not in the right area to really do that because you got a lot of foolish people around, haters and all of that stuff. But I don't care about none of that. I'm going to do what works best for me. But yeah, that's pretty much why it's sweet and pleasant to behold the sun because it literally makes you feel good. It does great things for your body. And it's a great way to start off your day. And it is an unnatural it is a natural alarm clock. I know it don't make noise, at least not to the to our ears where we can hear it. But in a way it do because the birds wake up with the sun, even before the sun, and they get the chirping. So if if you have shades on your windows or curtains on your windows where you can't let the sun come in or you refuse to let the sun come in. The sun will wake you up eventually anyway because of the fact that people are waking up with the sun even if you're not. The birds are waking up chirping even before the sun and definitely with the sun. And you got people who are waking up early anyway even if they didn't notice the sun right away to wake them up. They're getting up early anyway because that's just the time scale of their job. And it's, it happens to be around the time of sunrise. So you can't really get over the sun, you know, waking you up. Because if it ain't waking you up directly through your eyelids because you got your curtains or your shades open on your windows, then it's wake you up in some other form because it's... Other people are getting up around the same time of the sunrise and it's, they're making noise and that's making you wake up eventually. I mean, you got dogs barking, you got birds chirping, you got squirrels climbing all over your roof or your house. All of that can wake up people. If it don't wake them up, it will at least irritate them. <laughs> but yeah, the sun is very important very important and you know the elites know this and they go to sun right over there peeking out or trying to peek out but you could tell when if you observe the sky like I do or observe the heavens as the bible say you can you could tell what real clouds look like and what unnatural clouds look like unnatural clouds they look all disoriented and they look very transparent where you can see the one you can see the blue sky through them but at that point the sky won't look blue it'll look gray so you know you see this hazy white semi-transparent smog in the air which are chemicals and it really look like I mean it's really metals it's really heavy metals nanoparticles, smart dust, all of that stuff. But the real clouds, which some of those may be, real clouds are clusters. They're clusters. They're not all everywhere like this crap. These are chemtrails. And uh, the fake clouds, some of them look like waves. That's because the electromagnetic the, le the electromagnetic frequency that they are hitting these chemicals with uh, they're called scalar waves or whatever so they, they make the, the clouds look wavy like unnatural crap like look at this crap right here see how it's just all flowing around those ain't real clouds but most people don't look at that they don't, they don't see that stuff like that they look up and like, oh, it's, it's blue skies or it's, it's clear blue skies for the most part. And it's sunny. 
and they don't even notice they they see the the haze and all that they see all of that but they think that those are clouds but they don't know what real clouds look like because real clouds look like clusters they're just like you know balls of clouds in their own lane they don't they can unify yeah but they they're not all everywhere like this like spread out with like little like this stuff is bull crap this is garbage this is fake genetic or uh what do they call that uh geoengineering that's what this crap is right here oh they got a beautiful sun see and also the sun is sweet and satisfying because it that warmth that's the main thing the warmth it is it's no comparison i know some people will say oh you know it's too hot well it's not necessarily because of the sun it's because it's not a breeze with the sun it nature has to have a balance so for it to be good weather out it can't just be sunny without no breeze because then you're going to have heat and humidity and then people are going to complain about that but if you got heat humidity and a breeze like it is right now that's perfect weather right there that's ideal weather i mean minus the minus these fake clouds that's good weather but if you got one sunlight two clear blue skies three um, the heat from the sun and then you got a breeze that's perfect weather especially if it's in the summertime season with you know everything is growing and ripe for the harvest but anyway I thought I'd make this quick video I didn't want it to be too long but hopefully someone out there get what I'm talking about how important it is to be out in the sun and also one more thing before I end this video a lot of people talk about this thing called earthing or grounding. That's not as beneficial as the sun. I can promise you that. Grounding your feet to the soil. That's not as important as the sun. The sun is way more important than grounding your feet. Matter of fact, I have did the research not too long ago. I've actually did the personal experience experimental um, practice with the grounding epidemic or whatever and it's bull crap it don't work I don't feel better it was a placebo effect I think most people think that grounding or earthing your feet is good or it's beneficial but I don't think it is I don't think it's beneficial the sun, I could literally feel the benefits instantly. I feel happy instantly. I feel inspired instantly. I feel energized instantly. Detoxification is happening instantly. But when I ground my feet and all that stuff, my feet get all cold. Bugs get the crawling up my feet. Like, I don't think that it's, I don't think it's beneficial, like, like they say. You know, it, it might be beneficial to some degree, but as far as, you know, extracting the free electrons from the earth and all of that stuff, it might be, I got to do more research, but if you're trying to get any type of energy like that, your best bet is to get out in the sun. And the powers to be, they know this. They're laughing when we talk about earthing or grounding. But when we get to talking about the sun, oh, you know, then they want to put up a fight. Why is that? Because they know that the sun is very important. It's way more important than, I wouldn't say it's more important than eating properly. But both of them are nonetheless important. You know, you got to have both as well as getting proper, you know, oxygen. And that's another thing that the sun helps with. It helps create oxygen but it don't create the oxygen directly it got to create the plants and the plants will create oxygen ultimately you know once they mature i think even small 
immature plants can create some form of oxygen. I need to do more research on that, but I do know that nonetheless plants create oxygen. As humans, we breathe out carbon dioxide. The plants absorb that, and then they breathe out oxygen, which we breathe. And, you know, it's it's just a back-and-forth cycle. It's a balance. Everything exists for a reason. Just like that beautiful sun up there that they always blocking out. And they always say, oh, y'all humans, y'all need, to be, y'all need to be wearing sunglasses. Y'all need to have sunblock on your skin. Why would you want to block out something natural like the sun? Just a bunch of psychopaths, a bunch of idiots block out the sun. Put on skin block on your on your on your skin. Sun block on your skin, excuse me. That's just gonna call that's gonna clog your skin pores. And not only that, that's gonna leach toxins, whatever crap that they're putting in the sunblock, that's gonna go on your skin pores and it's gonna ultimately toxify your, your blood. And your internal organs are gonna go bad. All because you putting this crap on your skin. And then sunglasses, oh my goodness, why would you want to block out UV rays? They tell you UV rays are so bad for you, they'll cause, I think they say melanoma or something like that. That's bull crap. You're not going to get skin cancer from the sun. You're not going to get uh, glaucoma from the, from the sun. You're not going to get eye problems from the sun unless you're looking directly at it all day, every day. Yeah, you're going to mess up your optic nerve. You're going to go blind, probably, likely. But if it's indirectly going in your eye, that is not a bad thing. That is very natural. You do not wear sunglasses. That is stupid. That is foolish. That is one of the stupidest things you could do to your body is wear sunglasses all day, every day. Now, with the unnatural lights that they have in, in the stores now with the LED lights... The um these high high beam LED lights that they got on these cars, I would say put on sunglasses to block that crap out. So driving at night with sunglasses on is actually a good thing because you're blocking out those those high beam ultra beam LED lights with those unnatural frequencies. You know, and you're not going to get all of these melabotic um, issues with your your nervous system. And you're not going to deplete your melatonin in your, in your brain, in your pineal gland. But these fluorescent lights, they're very bad for your... Not only your eyes, but your sleep. So y'all watching videos at night on your phone with your brightness all the way up. You're going to go blind and you're not going to sleep. You're going to keep your insomnia, your restlessness. You're going to have anxiety issues, all of that stuff. Because you're looking at light, these unnatural frequencies at night. You need to get incandescent light bulbs in your house. Those old, warm yellowish light bulbs yeah they use a little bit more electricity but you need something to mimic the sun why you can't get the sun at night in your house because it's not every day that we get we're supposed to have natural sun every day but you got idiots out here and psychopaths that are spraying the sky they work for satan and that's what it is. So you got to beat around this crap. Most people don't know this. They don't know how important the proper light is. And the, the, the greatest light you could have is the sun. At least from a physical perspective. I mean, if you're thinking spiritually, then the light of the holy word of the creator would be the greatest. But we're talking about a natural physical perspective right now and that will be the sun you need natural sunlight and when you can't get it 
and you indoors, especially if you live a sedentary life style, then you need to have incandescent light bulbs in your house. Not these new ultra bright abnormal frequency LED lights, these high beam reflective lights in your house. You don't need that crap. You'll never get proper sleep. You'll never have optimum health. I don't care how healthy you're eating and how active you are. Anyway, if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Shalom.